that I would drink until I could not drink anymore. And I started out, I started out as that social drinker, you know, just hanging out with my buddies. And uh, I always said, I'm not gonna drink around my kids, I'm not gonna do that. Next thing you know, I got the fridge in the shop at the house, it's, it's packed out. Cause, Cause you know that 12 pack I drank from, from Pascagoula to Loosedale, just, that, that just didn't do it for me. So I had to have somewhere when I got home, right? So I'd get home and I didn't want to go in the house, I'd go out to my shop, but then I got tired of going out to my shop. So I brought it in the house with me. And then I went from, from beer to liquor and so on and so forth to, to it came to the point where I didn't go home after work anymore. Matter of fact, I barely went to work. And, and a job that I have that would fire me for drinking, I found myself mixing me up a little fix, right? Before I went in, ah, oh, they're never gonna know. Until one, you know, it just, I realized one day that my wife had her stuff packed and she was kind of over it. And my kids didn't want to see daddy. See, it went from, it went from, daddy would walk through the door and daddy would get floods of hugs, right? To dad walked in the door and, well, let's all go to our rooms. Let's get away from him. See, that's, that's what I call a blistering alcoholic. Because see, I got this thing that I don't know if it's just in me or what, but it's hard to overcome and I still struggle with it. It's just it's this anger problem. And for some reason when I go to drink, and I don't beat on people, but I'm just a cranky person. And the more I drink, the more cranky I got. And my wife just said, I don't want to be with you anymore. You're not who I married. You are not the man that I married. And I was telling someone today, you know, I praise God that I got a woman that did, that did. she put her foot down and she said, I'm going to stand by my man and I'm going to get him some help. She didn't put me in rehab. She didn't call and have me committed. She did what every woman ought to do with her husband that doesn't know Jesus. She took me to church. She took me to where the sick really need to go. I mean, we can go to the doctor and we can get some stuff fixed. We can. We can get cuts, bruises, diseases. We, we can go get a few things fixed. But when you're really sick, when you're really sick, that's what matters. So I found myself at the end of this road. And I'm trying to make a long story short because this went over a period of lots of years. So I found myself at the end of my road there, the end of myself. I had a choice to make. What do I do? Do I choose this addiction that I've bound myself to? Or do I choose my family? Because one or the other can't be in, I mean, I can't have both. If I choose my addiction, my family's gone. If I choose my family, I've got I've got to do something, but I couldn't, I couldn't shake it. I couldn't shake it. She had always went to church. She had always begged me to go to church with her. And I'd always say, no, nah, you go, go on to church. That just gave me some alone time to get outside and drink. Right? So, I'll shorten this up, I swear. I, I, came to that, I came to that fork in the road. And I had a choice to make. So I said, I'm going to give this a shot. Because the only stable thing in my life is this woman who just goes to church and tells me about Jesus. I don't know who this Jesus is, but my wife seems to love him a whole lot more than she loves me. So I decided to go to church. So here I am sitting on the back of you, blistered every Sunday morning because I didn't drink myself to death the night before. And it took a long time. But one day, one glorious day, instead of being ready to get up out of that pew and run out the back door, I realized that I, there was something wrong with me. And that there was someone who had the answers that I didn't know anything about. Amen. And he touched me that day. He touched me that day and changed my life, changed my world, and changed my mind. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not saying, because it don't happen to everybody. I don't know that God works the way he wants to work. That addiction was gone. It took it took that taste of alcohol out of my mouth. It took that that draw to it. It went away. And I have people come to me and it's like, well, I still struggle with the want to. You know what? That's, that's just your body. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying that you ain't saved if you still desire things. I'm just saying, that's what God did for me. He took it from me. Because when I found myself at that fork in the road, when I found myself at that decision point, I said, God, I want my family. 
and I want whatever it takes to get that. I want my family back to where it's supposed to be. God, I think you, God's all about family. The family is the most important thing to you. I said, God, I want that. Most of all, God, I want you. And when I opened my heart to that, boy, he just came flooding in. I mean, you see where I stand today. I've dedicated my life to reaching out and trying to help. And I don't know, you know, I don't know if my testimony helps you at all, but I try to reach out with it and help and just tell people about the love of Jesus. The healing that's in Jesus. There is a remedy. And his name is Jesus Christ. For a world that's lost in darkness, for a saint who's gone astray, for a sin of blind searching, for a child in need of faith, for the homeless and forsaken, for the hungry and cold, for the, <laughs> the captive, for the young and for the old. Solution for all the problems deep inside. 